picking a favorite in this match, it's hard to pick against Andrea given his construction of his deck here this weekend. So for Li Shitian, it is certainly a case of get out of the gates as quick as we can, keeping the hand with 10th Street Dodger, Cavalcade of Calamity, Rimrock Knight, Light Up the Stage, and Tybalt, Rakish Instigator. I wanted to ask you, do you think Tybalt is going to play a, a big part in this matchup, considering the amount of life gain that Andrea is playing, or will it become not so much. Well, there are times where it's going to be good. There are times where it will not be terribly effective. Of course, the ability to prevent life gain from occurring is very nice. You're, of course, playing against a deck that does have plenty of ways to generate food and four copies of Hydroid Craces. So, you know, ideally, it's the last card you play as part of your curve. You'd like to get the game started off with a one drop into a two drop and then maybe light up the stage plus Cavalcade, which Lee's hand looks like it may allow, and then have that last card that you play be that to bolt where Andrea's trying to stabilize with a big Hydroid Craces. So we'll see how uh, Lee elects to sequence his spells with a pretty darn good opening hand, truth be told. Talking about opening hands, Mangucci's is a big risk, no lands to speak of, but does have the once upon a time to help him find that first green to get the ball rolling with Gilded Goose into Paradise Druid, or just straight into Oko. Does he find it? Let's see. Well, let's see if we can get our eyes on it right now. Mangucci taking a look at the top five cards of his deck. He needs a green source right now. So we'll see if he was able to find one. Ideally, one that enters the battlefield untapped. He did find a basic force, so that is a huge find there for Andrea. Huge relief as well. You don't want to whiff off a once upon a time, but Gilded Goose is on the battlefield with the food token. It generates Nishi Tian, draws a Torbrand, Thane of Redfell, off the top of the library. I want to see this card in action. We have seen some explosive things happen when he's on the battlefield. And it's interesting because uh, uh, typically when you're playing against a red deck, keeping a hand that is reliant on Gilded Goose living is something you really can't do over the past handful of years with shocks and lightning strikes and so much more flying around. But for Li Shi and how red is kind of made in this format, there are no burn spells. You don't have to worry about your shocks, your lightning strikes, so on and so forth. You know your mana creatures are in most instances going to live. And so that's why Andrea is able to keep what looks like a pretty scary and sketchy hand. We'll see if it does end up working out. Li Shi just getting in for that one point of damage and firing off light up the stage to find another land and Rimrock Knight off the top of the library. Those are in exile until the end of his next turn. We're going to see Dear Oko come into play. Yeah, there's a pretty good chance. you got to get the Thief of Crowns onto the battlefield right now. This is the card that Li Shi Tian is very, very scared of and with good reason. It's got a ton of loyalty and it does a lot of things that his deck has difficulty against, like obviously creating a food token. So that's where Andrea is going to start things. The mana problems and mana problems could have been what a big deal. Problems? Yeah, they are out of the way now. <laughs> what mana problems? But that's that's the impact that Once Upon a Time has had on these green base decks. They just make keeping hands like that a possible, you know, it's not that much of a risk anymore like it used to be in previous sets. Yeah, I mean, that's the extreme end of it, keeping a no-lander there and hoping to get there, of course. But things did work out. He's already got Oko on the battlefield on turn number two, a couple of Paradise Druids in the holster, and more importantly, the Big Bad Wolf might be coming to town next turn. <laughs> Big Bad Wolf will certainly have a few decent targets, but it depends what Li Shitian decides to run out next. He does have the Cavalcade available to him, so he can get those extra points of damage pinging, but he also has Tybalt Rakish Instigator in the holster. Well, sequencing here is going to be key. So he has found land number three. It also means he has land number four, which means that Torbrand can come down the following turn. So he needs to maximize his cavalcades and his Torbrand this game. This yeah. is what this is all about. Again, this matchup is a very much an uphill climb here for Lee, but if anyone can do it, he certainly can. He loves aggressive strategies. He plays them beautifully, but he's got to figure out ways to knock down this Planeswalker first before doing anything else. So the lovingly dubbed Tian Street Dodger is swinging in there, gonna get boulder rushed, possibly twice, just the once, taking Oko down to three, and the Rimrock Knight following up to join him on the battlefield. Deputy Detention off the top there for Mengucci. How important is that going to be in this matchup? So this card's actually good in this matchup, where generally this kind of card would be pretty bad against red decks, again, of the past, where you had plenty of ways to kill creatures like Lightning Strike and so much more. You're not really going to find a good, clean way to deal three points of damage to a creature. No copies of Slaying Fire running around here. So with that in mind, Deputy Detention is actually the kind of card that can come down, take something or multiple permanents, and you can pretty much assume that they're going to be gone for the rest of the game because Li Shitian does not have a great way to get rid of the one three not for the time being possibly with a tor brand in combination with a creature attacking or with uh, the stomp from the giant but we'll have to see if we get to that point 
We do have a mountain, so we can get Torbran on the battlefield. Scorchbitter was the draw. That's another little pesky critter that I quite I quite fancy this little guy. Yeah, you know, these little red knuckleheads, they're nowhere near <laughs> as powerful as they used to be, but you know, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Red is looking to kill the opponent with direct damage. This is a unique way to do it here in Cavalcade of Calamity. So it looks like Lee is gonna go towards his namesake enchantment. He's got Rimrock Knight slash Boulder Rush in the holster. Tin Street Dodger can come on through with that activated ability. And we might see your old friend Scorch bitter post-combat as Rimrock, not, Rimrock Knight, pardon me, looks like it wants to attack as well. So Tin Street Dodger doing a decent job of chipping away at Oko's loyalty. Rimrock Knight's Boulder Rush is going to finish off the job there. And we'll see a trade with Rimrock Knight and the Elk Food Token. And you see Mangucci, he's kind of shaking and nodding his head here a little bit because Lee had to go through a lot of work to take care of that lone Oko. Oko got to do some things, generate a food, make an elk, trade with a Rimrock Knight, but to Lee's credit, he did get Oko off of the battlefield. Mangucci's having some mana problems, which, you know, when you keep a no lander, <laughs> that's bound to happen, even though he found two. So right now, his Gilded Goose, not going to do very much. Paradise Druid is active. Can tap for a white for deputy of detention. So Mangucci's got some decisions this turn. Might just go to another copy of Paradise Druid. That's exactly what he's going to do. Just get those creatures down on the battlefield, ramp into something hopefully find some extra land to help him out but here we see Tybalt rakish instigator perhaps joining the fray before torban thane of redfell again it's all about sequencing here from lee looks like he wants to get tor excuse me looks like he wants to get Tybalt down early a scorch bitter activate the tin street dodger come on into the red zone get some damage dealt this way one from the cavalcade one from the dodger Torbran still left in the holster along with that rimrock knight that mangucci does know about so sequencing very specifically here but as much sequencing has taken place, Wicked Wolf does not care. <laughs> that 10th Street Dodger, which has proven to be rather evasive and tricky and getting things done, is off the battlefield, but Torbran is coming down hot. Wicked Wolf eyeing that out, and this is gonna hurt. Here we go, triggers, adding two extra damage. Her source, whoa. Yikes, Andrea Mangucci is down to seven all of a sudden. And that has to hurt. Yeah, Mangucci's in some serious trouble right now because Tabalt is doing a beautiful job on this game of saying you can't gain any life. Now, if you take a look in Mangucci's hand, he actually doesn't have any great ways to gain life right now with those questing beasts, the Deputy of Attention, and the Nissa. So that Deputy of Attention is going to be working overtime this particular game. It's got to take care of one of these problematic permanents, not so much the creatures, more maybe the Planeswalker or the Enchantment as we head back Andrea's way. Oh, this next turn is going to be absolutely brutal. A second Cavalcade of Calamity, two 1-1 one -one creatures that can swing through for those just buffed up points of damage thanks to Torbran, Thane of Redfell. Absolutely painful for Mangucci. There's yeah, not much he can do in this situation. That's why I think he's looking towards going towards that deputy detention. That one's actually kind of missing out of his hand right now because he's hovering over it with his mouse and he's thinking about deploying that spell. Of course, if you take a look at his hand, Questing Beast is not going to have a huge impact on the game right now. Hydroid Crisis is going to have ultimately no impact on the game and Nissa can't be cast yet. So to the deputy, he'll go and he'll take care of Torbran, at least for now. Mountain off the top, Cavalcade of Calamity number two enters the battlefield. And these little one ones are going to make some pain for Mangucci. Four triggers from the cavalcade. Ew. Is he down to? It's going to fall down to three before blocks. Now, unsurprisingly, Deputy Detention is going to jump in front of one, and Paradise Druid will jump in front of the other. These blocks have to be tendered. Mangucci has to get these creatures off of the battlefield, has to hope that there's no boulder rush here from Lee. Looks like he may be considering letting the one creature through and not block for the Paradise Druid because his mana is so constricted. He's going to go down to one if he does. Yeah, he's I, going down to one either way. Yeah, I, I just don't think that he can allow this to occur, so it looks like we're going to see some blocks here. Both little critters die. Death Traegers coming in hot. Dealing two points of damage to the Deputy of Detention. I love that. Yeah, get the Deputy out of the way. Get the oh. Torbrand back on the battlefield. Deploy the Rimrock Knight and say, beat these with your three mana sources. I just oh, don't goodness. see it happening. And a Temple Garden, as good as that is as far as a land is concerned, you got to pay to play with that card. Yeah, it's a little bit late as well to the party. Would have been much better a few turns earlier for Andrea Mangucci just to try and gum up the battlefield and fight against these ferocious red creatures. It's looking very good here for Li Shitian. You, you got to believe it. You know, mm -hmm. he, he is someone, again, who plays aggressive decks incredibly, incredibly well. You saw the beautiful sequencing over the course of this game. There were a lot of different ways he could have played his turns. It looks like he's played them all expertly and is currently on his way, I would say, to a game one victory. Temple Garden. 
Dealing two points of damage to Andrea Mangucci, firing off the Hydra Traces. <laughs> it's a 1-1 one, one only, but it is a blocker. That is all Mangucci can do for the time being. Mountain is the draw for Lee, so no extra goodies for him, but swinging in with both creatures saying, all right, I want to move your stuff out the way, please. I am going for the W. Well, here comes the plan. Time to get lucky. First got to draw an untapped land. Nope. Wasn't able to do that. So here's what here's what Mangucci needs to have happen. He yeah. needs his opponent to miss and miss and miss. And he and missed he's again. Doing that. So he's drawn another mountain. You take your block here, okay? So okay. Hydrocrasis gets blocked by Torbran. Excuse me, Torbran gets blocked by Hydrocrasis. You need Lee to basically miss the rest of the game and you need to draw some lands that are untapped and don't do any damage. Mangucci drew a copy of Wicked Wolf in Ace in the matchup, but he can't cast it and has to concede the game. Very, very sketchy hand to keep for Andrea Mangucci. It looked like it was paying off. He had the mana creatures to do the things he wanted to get done, but just these red creatures, you know, forcing the blocks, just throttling Mangucci's mana creation there, so... Yeah, let's go to sideboards. What are we doing? Lee is sideboarding very, very quickly. His sideboard is very straightforward. I love a 4-4-4-3 four, 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 sideboard. <laughs> four Lava Coil, four Shocks, four Legion War Bosses, and three Experimental Frenzies. He wants his Lava Coils and his Shocks. He wants to be able to interact. Lava Coil is an ace in this matchup. Kills Questing Beast. Going to kill a bunch of other creatures as well in the matchup. And then Shock does a nice job of kind of slowing down the mana creatures where... Uh, where Andre didn't have to worry about that in game number one, it is something he is cognizant of and has to be aware of for game number two. So, Lee doing a nice job of playing a beautiful game, and maybe, just maybe, even though he said himself he feels like this matchup is horrible, might be able to steal this one. And play versus draw for this, do we think that Mangucci has the better start this turn? Oh, I mean, these are, this is a I mean, play versus draw is huge whenever you're playing against a red deck. So uh, unquestionably, Mangucci being on the play here is a very, very big deal. His hand is totally fine here. He's going to start things off with Once Upon a Time to find a Deputy of Detention. He's got a Paradise Druid for Mana Acceleration, and he doesn't have the problems that he had in the previous game. So a uh, much better here for Andrea. Uh, there's a higher ceiling possible with opening hands for him, and Wicked Wolf's now working itself into the equation. Mangucci's got to be feeling good here about game number two. Li Tian getting off to a blistering start again with Fervent Champion on the battlefield, swing in. No threat of it dying due to first strike, following it up with what's it gonna be? Steamkin? Well, yeah, I mean, definitely Runaway Steamkin. It's your best card, arguably, in your deck. I would say it's certainly your most powerful card. So getting that on turn number two and hoping it lives is <laughs> ideal, uh, but Wicked Wolf has other ideas. He does indeed, so that Steamkin is no longer in play, but we have Lava Coil, like you mentioned. Very, very critical in this matchup. Gonna get rid of that Wicked Wolf, perhaps, but let's see what Lee wants to do. Perhaps attack first and then use the Shock before combat damage is dealt after first strike damage? Well, if the Fervent Champion does come in, uh, the chances of Andrea blocking, I think, are pretty low. He knows that his opponent has Shock in his sideboard. Is also aware of the adventure half of Bone Crusher Giant, even though that card got moved to the sideboard there for Lee. So I'd be a little bit surprised to see a blocker from Andrea. He's got a lot of life to work with. Wicked Wolf is a powerful card in the match. So just going to fall down to 17 and use his life total as a resource. So he can get rid of both creatures here. Lava Coil one, Shock the other. And I wouldn't Pretty be surprised good. to see that, um, given how the last game played out and how Andrea had some real mana issues, and this is a three-color deck. Taking care of both creatures, especially that Paradise Druid, makes a lot of sense to me. Another Wicked Wolf off the top, going to take care of Fairman Champion number one. He does have another in the hand. Scorch Spitter and Rimrock Knight as well. Yeah, but this is kind of the nightmare scenario here if you are a uh, lead, because now Wicked Wolves plural are starting to kind of bridge the gap into the mid game and the late game. Again, Andrea's not going to block here. He does know that he's turning on Spectacle from the light up the stage, so this is a sequence of plays that can occur. And Scorch Spitter looks like it's going to come down after combat, but Wicked Wolf is just such a powerful card in the matchup. You want to make favorable trades with it, not some trades into something like a boulder rush. But important to note, still no food generation, so the Wicked Wolf won't become indestructible just yet. Correct. Deputy Detention enters the battlefield and gets rid of Fervent Champion number two. He'll hang on to that for the time being. Wicked Wolf swinging in for three points of damage, taking Lee down to 17. Big fan of that attack because Andrea's trying to turn the corner now. He says, you know what? My life total's pretty darn high at 16. Next turn, I'm almost certainly going to play a land and a Hydroid Crisis. It'll be a 4-4. Four, four. I'll gain two life. I'll draw two cards. The chances of you being able to beat a 4-4 four, four after you've already played at least one Lava Coil Steam, pretty low. So, again, I, I like the way that Andrea is playing things right now. This Runaway Steam can may change the tenor of the game a little bit, but Andrea's clearly looking to get this game over with and transform from playing defense and going on offense. Scorch Spitter triggering light up the stage. Boulder Rush is going to get rid of this Deputy of Detention, giving back the Fervent Champion one counter on Steamkin off of the Boulder Rush. 
And that's an exchange I think that Andrea's happy with as well, because instead of a first striker killing the creature with the Boulder Rush, instead you're trading your creature for the Scorch Spitter. Yes, your opponent's going to get that Fervent Champion back, but you're making an exchange that is favorable, and it looks like he still wants to do some attacking. Looks like he's still, I mean, he's considering slowing down a little bit, but again, I like taking an offensive approach and just trying to get this game over with. You've got the bigger creatures and you've got a good spell in the holster yeah. there in Deputy of Detention. The face race is certainly on. We have the bigger creatures on Andrea's side. The little red creatures on this side need some help here. Maybe Runaway Steamkin can do Steamkin things like we've seen it go off many times before. Oh, I mean, that's just the power of that elemental. Runaway Steamkin can lead to some absolutely absurd turns and Lee is in the tank thinking about well what can I do to generate an absurd turn because that's what he needs to get himself back into this game it's kind of starting to lean Andrea's way right now that's why Andrea's feeling as though he can attack so Lee's got to take this game back from Andrea runaway steam can is a way to do that and the only way to get a point of damage through to fire off the light of the stage with Spectacle is to attack with both, but then the Steam King dies, so we're just going to fire off the Rimrock Knight and the Scorch Better, and then we're going to empty Runaway Steam King. Maybe firing off Light Up the Stage. Yeah, there's the potential to fire off Light Up the Stage here for three mana, and I think that's what Lee's going to do, which means another counter will be placed on the Steam King. So Cavalcade and Torbrand, now those are nice cards to find. We need land, though, Cedric. Land would be nice. More red spells for Runaway Steam can would be nice as well. But those are the kind of cards that if you can play both of those cards in one turn, we mm -hmm. just saw in the last game, they can lead to a win all by themselves. It's all going to depend what the next draw is for Lee, how he can sequence his plays, what can Steam can get done for him. But on the other side of the battlefield, we've got a deputy of detention that doesn't have the best targets. Runaway Steam can is probably it. A Wicked Wolf and a Hydroid Crasis unanswered in the air at the moment. So this is an interesting spot here for Andrea Mangucci. His Hydroid Crasis just coughed up a couple of lands along with his draw step, so he is flooding out a little bit here. But he's not going to focus on that so much. He's going to focus on how he can go about winning this game in short order because he is flooding out. So Deputy Detention can buy him a little bit of time here. The Runaway Steam can is far and away, I think, the best target. So take away that. You're taking away his biggest and best creature, his highest, highest ceiling effect, and passing the turn, looking to try to win the game the next turn. No land off the top for Lee, so we will not see Torbrand, Thane of Redfell, on the battlefield just yet. But he can get some uh, nasty damage through. He is on the back foot here. He's certainly not the beatdown, at least I would say he's not the beatdown at this point in time. Getting into the Rimrock Knight because it can't block anyway, so may as well get some damage in while possible. Yeah, I like this attack a lot. It's straightforward enough because Rimrock Rim Knight can't block, of course, but, you know, maybe Andrea will block here with his deputy attention <laughs> and you know that's something highly that Lee, unlikely that's something that Lee <laughs> may be interested in again Andre is at 17 so falling down to 14 isn't the end of the world but it does turn on the spectacle for light up the stage so I think oh. that's why we're seeing Andrea think about okay. should I block or not here because light up the stage okay. into perfects would be a way for Lee to get back into this game oh yes you called it so cavalcade will be the play we've got the steam can back rimrock knight is in the graveyard along with the deputy of attention and a glass casket off the top for Mangucci. That's a nice piece of removal in this matchup for sure. Yeah, you like this card. You're looking for just cheap ways to interact with the opponent. Glass casket checks both of those boxes. So mm -hmm. goodbye, runaway Steamkin. I like that. I like the straightforward attack. Again, these red creatures, they are so small and tiny. They don't line up well <laughs> against the wicked wolf. So now a bunch of damage is going to come through, and life is pretty good here for Mangucci. He should be winning almost certainly on the next turn. Well, well, Lava Coil may change a few things. Scorch Bitter will be on blocking duty, but that, that at least takes care of the... Oh, we're going to go for well, Light of the Stage? So I, I, like, I, like, the, yeah, I yeah. like this play a lot because this is Light of the... Uh, Lee Shijian needs to get lucky anyway, so he's going to yeah. start with Light of the Stage here, hoping to maybe hit land plus one drop to be able to block and then Lava Coil a creature. He's got to get very, very Ooh. fortunate in the first place to win the game and come back. Looks like he didn't do that. Try to maximize his opportunity to do so and will now concede the game. So no luck there for Lee. It is tied up one apiece between Andre Andrea Mangucci and Li Shi Tian in this quarterfinals matchup. You know, the, the lesson I take away from that game there was a really well played game there by Andrea. You know, Lee played a beautiful game one, but Andrea did something that players of his caliber do very, very well, which is when they are mana flooding in certain situations, they don't really focus on that because they can't control that aspect of the game. What they can control is how can I win this game quickly to mitigate the fact that I'm flooding out and my opponent obviously has spells because Lee wasn't playing any lands. So what did Andrea start doing? Something I love, attack, <laughs> attack the opponent. That's the way I can shorten the game. He did that beautifully. Those creatures don't block well in the first place, and he was able to win that game while flooding out to lead us to this third and final one. 
When in doubt, turn things sideways. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Now you're speaking my language. <laughs> there you go. It only took you to day three, but now you're speaking my language. <laughs> oh, come on. We, we both like Agri. You know that. That's right. <laughs> so well, Lee, just taking a few more, uh, a, few, a little bit of time here just to make sure he's got the right configuration that he wants. He will be on the play. Lee's got to be thrilled here. So in a matchup like this, when you're playing an aggressive strategy, something I've played for very long in my career, the one thing you want to do when you're in a bad matchup is ideally you win game one because that means you're on the play for game three. A way that you can steal games against decks in bad matchups is, hey, maybe they stumble and fumble. Maybe I'm able to run them down. Maybe their lands don't line up accordingly. So being on the play for game three is step one of many for Lee to steal this match, and it would be stealing if he was able to win it. <laughs> so both players happy with their hands, and they look pretty darn good, if I do say so myself. Got a nice mix of lands and removal for Lee. And yeah, that's a pretty loaded hand for Andrea. I mean, the power level of Andrea's hand is through the roof. Oh, yeah. Questing Beast, Tulsimir, even a card like Aether Gust, which is not a rare or a mythic, but it doesn't need to be. It lines up beautifully in the matchup given its text against red strategies. Lee's hand is very, very reactive, unfortunately for him with those Lava Coils, which yes, they are good in the matchup and I'm sure they will have some play here, but he likes to be giving some better beatdowns, I would say. Yeah. So Fervin Champion is going to get swinging with a Tin Street Dodger, getting in for two, perhaps, if there's no Aether Gust to deal with. And Gucci's thinking about it. This so one, of course, just send it back to the top of the library. It bricks the draw a little bit, but, you know, can just recast it and get swinging again straight away. Yeah, do remember that it's Lee's choice on the Aether Gust if he yep. does want to put the card on the top or the bottom. I wouldn't be surprised to see him put whatever card is gusted to the bottom because he's got higher ceiling draw steps like light up the stage and run away Steamkin. So looks like Tin Street Dodger is going to be the target here with the Gust. I'm curious to see where he decides to put this. Like I said, could well go bottom. Want to find Steamkin get rolling with that. Do have the man for Torbrand, so chances are we'll see that on the battlefield. Yeah, his next turn is almost played for him in some regards with the Torbrand and the Mountain. There are certain draw steps that could change what he wants to do, but, you know, looking at his hand as it currently stands, I think Lee knows what his turn four play is going to be, but he's got to think a little bit here about Tin Street Dodger going to the top or the bottom of the deck, and the reason for that is actually pretty simple. It's got a relevant ability in the matchup. Yeah, certainly. It gets through, like, every single creature in Andrea Mangucci's deck, so yeah. it's one that he's deliberating about, but he has sent it to the bottom. Fervent Champion just getting in for the one point of damage, and it'll be interesting to see what Lee draws next turn. Temple Garden off the top for Andrea Mangucci. Can take the Fervent Champion if he decides. Not much else he can do this turn, so that'll be the play. I like Mangucci's play a lot here. Now, yes, he takes two damage to make this play of taking care of that Fervent Champion, but what Mangucci is going to be doing over the next handful of turns is play a big spell, play a big spell, play a big spell. Next turn, Questing Beast. Next turn, Talsimir, most oh, likely. Oh, another deputy off the top. That's just rude. I mean, that's a very, very good draw. But <laughs> the beautiful thing is he's going to basi basically what he's going to do here is use all his mana and say, rare, mythic rare, <laughs> bigger rare. Can you beat them? Because Mangucci's power level on his deck is so much higher than Lee's. We saw Lee put the combination of cards together. That's how he was able to win game one. But what Lee can't do and what Andrea can do is say, I'm going to flex my muscles. <laughs> I'm going to play awesome cards and see if you can beat them. I like the Deputy of Attention play here instead of the Questing Beast solely because Torbrand is a way that Andrea can lose this game. Let's take care of that as well. Rimrock Knight off the top. We have two Lava Coils to deal with both of these deputies, but then no answer for the Questing Beast yep. for the time being. So Deputy number one dealt with Torbrand back on the battlefield. Deputy number two meets the same fate to the second Lava Coil, and Javier Dominguez back on the battlefield for Lee. Yeah, and we're going to give some beatdowns here with the Haste Creature, Torbrand being on the battlefield, and then a Rimrock Knight slash Boulder Rush in the holster. So Lee is kind of going for it. By playing those two Lava Coils, Mangucci knows that, okay, two down, two to go. Mm -hmm. Chances of you having a third one in your hand mathematically are pretty darn low. And now by playing the Boulder Rush, now I know it's not there, which means Tulsimir is clear for takeoff. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Oko off the top as well. That's pretty darn good for Mangucci. So all of these good cards you mentioned, the blue-green good stuff, they're coming up. Trump's here. Yeah, I mean, these are great cards. Some of them are difficult to cast. And, of course, they're a little bit more expensive than what Lee is doing. But those great cards have the ability to flex their muscles when Lee doesn't have his cavalcade of calamities yeah. and everything else going like we saw in game one. He is missing some extra firepower for sure. Andrea Mangucci just deciding, what do I want to run out? Is it going to be the Questing Beast, Oko, 
or will it be Tulsimir? Now, it, you know, th this is also a little bit of an interesting decision as well that Andrea is going to think about, too, about how he wants to sequence these handful of turns. I'd say he has the cards to probably win this game, given the texture of what Lee has on the battlefield, yeah. and we know he has a Rimrock Knight in the holster. But it's curious to see where Andrea wants to go. Again, it looks like he doesn't want to use all of his mana this turn. He wants to go to Oko, make that an Elk, and pass the turn back. So that's going to slow down Torbrand a little bit as far as its damage potential. Both creatures swinging in with Castle Amberth can deal with the Oko if he chooses to. Otherwise, let's just run out the Rimrock Knight. Can do both, right? Yeah, this, yeah, is, a little, do both. this is a little bit interesting, too. Does he want to kill Oko or not? It looks like the answer is yes, because Oko is so powerful. Oh, yeah. So it's a game you're interested in. And now the Rimrock yeah. Knight post-combat, which you mentioned. So we're face up. Yeah. The only thing Manguchi doesn't know is what Lee will be drawing <laughs> next turn, but no oh, one knows hello. that. Now, Hydroid Crisis, Hydroid is, crisis is a very good draw. Nice little bit of life, but I think we're going to go to Tulsimir, friend to wolves, first and foremost. Create a doggy. Get rid of this fervent champion. Yep. Creature stays in the battlefield, and there's the cavalcade. Mm, a little bit not, too late, though. Not the best draw here no. for Lee at all. Basically, a Texas enchantment at the moment. The attack is straightforward. I wouldn't be surprised to see a double trade here. Yeah. And Gucci basically saying, yeah, let's make some exchanges, because my next turn I can tap out for Hydroid Crisis. Oh. So love this block here from Gucci. Tough draw step here for Lee. Yeah. And it looks like this banned food deck's starting to run away with it, Alias. Exactly right. This red deck doesn't like going into the mid to late game. It no. wants to get things done as quick as possible, and unfortunately, the draw is just not in Lee's favor. Hydro Crisis, like you mentioned, for four. Going to draw two cards, gain two life, Deputy of Detention off the top, Questing Beast in hand two. So you think Andrea Manguchi is going to run away with this one? Yeah, he's starting to flex his muscles now because the draw steps here for Lee, the great ones are few and far between. Torbrand is a great place to start, but Lee's got little 1 1 knuckleheads, and Andrea can draw things like Deputy of Detention <laughs> and Wicked Wolf. <laughs> Deputy Detention, like you mentioned, dealing with Torbrand. <laughs> Hydroid Crisis swinging in. You can just see the shake of the head there from Lee. He's like, yeah. come on, give me a break. Eight points of damage, Questing Beast on the battlefield, Wicked Wolf in the holster. That's a mountain. Unless mountains move, Li Shi Tian is picking up the loss, unfortunately, for him. Andre Mangucci, congratulations. You progress. Mangucci felt like it was a good matchup coming in. He felt like he got a good draw as far as brackets are concerned. And Lee was very honest in his assessment of the matchup where he felt it was a very, very bad one. Unfortunately for him, that came to fruition. But for Mangucci, he's moving on to the semifinals up of the upper half of the bracket. Indeed, but Lee is not out of it yet. He's got no, one more chance. It to pick up another victory, victory after victory. It's gonna be a tough road for him now as he drops down to the lower bracket, but Mangucci is hanging out in the upper bracket and congratulations to him. Mythic Invitational Champion, maybe Mythic Champion. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to see again